Welcome back folks, Matt T here again with my Ford Edge and we're going to go ahead and of course I'm going to explain just a little bit about the uh, mass airflow sensor on the 3.5 and 3.7 Duratec for uh, model years say 2007 through 2014. Now the mass airflow sensor of course has some assistance today with CB. Uh, she's got her gloves on. Show them your gloves. Okay, we're all ready to go with the mass airflow sensor cleaning, but uh, we're going to go ahead and remove this. But a few things that you really need to know about your mass airflow sensor. Now, your mass airflow sensor element uses a hot wire and a cold wire. Okay, the hot wire, of course, drops in temperature as air flows over it. The cold wire detects the ambient air temperature. Now this is important because the ambient air temperature on the cold wire affects the hot wire. Now the hot wire is relying on the cold wire because the hot wire runs about 392 degrees Fahrenheit above the reading of the cold wire. So if your ambient air temperature outside is 100 degrees, then your hot wire is going to be at 492 degrees. Now we can see why this mass airflow sensor can fail. You start heating something up to 500 degrees, now you're going to have something really hot and now we can see something burning out. So there would be a failure at that point due to loss of connectivity should the connections heat up to such a point that they actually melt and free up in that process. So that is really what's going on with your mass airflow sensor. But there is more to it. Now the mass airflow sensor inputs a signal to the PCM. And this is important because the PCM carries a lot of information that actually will affect all your fuel mixtures and this is really what we're getting to. Now the PCM will utilize this input from the mass airflow sensor okay to calculate the pulse width of the injectors to ensure that the proper air fuel mixture is attained. So really the mass airflow sensor is controlling your fuel injectors through the PCM. All a big circle folks, the big circle of life going on here. Now all of this will also affect your electronic pressure controls as far as your transmission determining shifts and also your uh, transmission torque converter clutch pressures and everything else that do go along with this. So what happens is, and you will find out as I have found out, that of course this will affect your transmission you know that little uh, traction control light that'll come on things like that it won't shift very well if you disconnect your mass sensor I guarantee you your edge will shift differently almost not wanting to shift because it loses the signal from the mass airflow sensor so this mass airflow sensor is really tied to your PCM fuel mixture and your transmission this device controls the inputs for the outputs for the operation of the engine and the transmission. And tell you what, it costs, uh, I think the Ford part number, if you buy it at Ford, is over 225 bucks or so at the Ford dealerships. I think you could buy them on Amazon, uh, OEM, go OEM. Uh, this is an important piece. Uh, for like $160 or so and they require a core charge that means you have to return this because they rebuild them and resell them so uh, maybe a refurbished unit might be less I don't know but these are really you thought the PCM was a breeze well this is just one point where the sensor controls and outputs information to help the PCM and the transmission both operate at the optimum and with it dying you're going to get a lot of drivability issues and the engine may not even start because if it doesn't have an air fuel mixture ratio to run off of I have determined if you disconnect it and disconnect the air intake and no air flows over the uh, mass airflow sensor the engine won't run or start generally so you got to have that air flow going over that so let's go ahead remove this and then of course clean it 
Now to remove this mass airflow sensor, you just take and pull that red clip back and then pull this off of here. And as you can see, I got dielectric grease on mine to keep it uh, from uh, getting uh, all corroded up. Yeah. Please stay back just a little bit so people can see, okay? okay. All right. Then we use a T20, right? It was a T20? Yeah. All right. CB says it was a, was a T20, and we're going to go ahead and remove that. And we're not going to lose the screws, are we? Okay, get back so people can see. There we go. I'll hold the screws. You'll hold the screws? How about we set the screws right there? That way Daddy knows where they're at. Okay, now we're unscrewing this, and of course it's only two screws. Don't want to lose them, folks. So once you get them down... Yes, put it back down there so we don't lose it. All right. Now we can go ahead and pull this off. And this is what it looks like, folks. And the air pressure goes through here and it comes out through the reading here on the indent and flows through. So, and just remember, it's easy to remember, you got the tab down here so it'll face down that way. But this is, of course, the mass airflow sensor. So let's go ahead and show you what it looks like. Now I'm going to try to get you guys a nice view in there. Hopefully you can see that. You see those wires? And just remember the uh, first wire, the first wire, the red one, is your cold wire. And then of course right behind it there's a bare wire. And that bare wire, if you can see it, trying to move it here carefully. If you can see that bare wire, that is your heated wire, okay? That is what you're going to try to clean, uh, is these two pieces here. And of course, you can see the back of it. You have the sensors and everything else. And the airflow goes through. And this, of course, is what it is. Of course, you got the cover plate and you got the bottom there. So we're going to go ahead and clean it with the mass airflow sensor cleaner. And of course, this is what I'm going to use is uh, of course this here they, they aren't paying sponsorship but this is what I always use so uh, we'll go ahead and use this now all you do is you take the mass airflow sensor cleaner and you spray it in there you want to spray that in there give it a nice cleaning wear safety glasses of course I got my sunglasses are safety glasses folks I don't know if you ever knew that but my safety glasses are my sunglasses so I got two different pairs. But you definitely want to clean that off. Get it nice and clean. Use, uh, use it liberally. Okay, make sure you clean it in all directions. Now I'm going to say use, use plenty of it. You know, just don't touch them. You don't want to touch them, but you do want to spray them out nice and clean. And again, this one's got about... Uh, 120,000 miles on it or 30,000 so uh, we're not hurting anything by cleaning it but again I am using plenty of this to go ahead and clean this and don't touch those wires get it close but don't touch the wires and I'm going to say that that is good enough. Now we'll let this go ahead and dry. And then once it's dry, we'll reinstall it. Well, again, folks, remember the catch tab has to go down. So we're going to turn it around and face it down. Black, plas black plastic will be up. The color uh, chrome plated will be down. And then all you have to do is just gently slide it right back in. Nice and easy and then put the screws back. And I would say start the screws by hand just to make sure this is plastic and everything. You don't want to get too crazy with it because it is just a plastic connector. And then once we get the screws started, we can then go ahead and uh, fire up the old screwdriver that is falling apart on me. There we go. I've had this screwdriver for years, so as you can see, it's falling apart. Yeah, screw it up back together again. Holy cow. Tools are falling apart. And no, it's not a Harbor Freight, folks. It's some other cheapo thing. 
something that I got somewhere. I don't know where it was. Had it for years. But it does the job. And again, nice and snug. Don't over tighten it. And then, of course, go ahead, push that back in there like so. And then clip this wire back onto the air cleaner. And we are set. And that is your mass airflow sensor cleaning. Well, folks, that is predominantly it. That is how you clean your mass airflow sensor. Remember, it does a lot of different things. Transmission control, PCM control for air fuel mixture for your injectors, and everything that goes with it. So you want to make sure that you do keep it clean. Don't damage it. And remember, there's a core charge to replace it. So this is Mac T. Remember, join up on YouTube and of course subscribe and click that bell so you can then register and receive all the new e videos that I make and also Mac T Ford Edge on Facebook join the group all you have to do is hit join and we'll get you in there and of course answer your questions with a fine group that we are and last but not least my feet hit the floor today and I'm having a great day and I want you to have a great day too and of course, Mercy Grill is going to give us some follow on messages. And then the Band of One is going to play some great music. And remember, hit that donate button for those stickers. It's five bucks a piece if you want them, US and Canada. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead and have maybe a little bit of them washing the car afterwards. Let's see what they do. Say hi. hi. Washing the car. Washing the car. Say hi, everybody. Bye. I'm filling the glue. Yep. Show me how you're going to fill the glove with water. I'm just going to do this. You sure that's safe? Did your mom say you could do that? <laughs> What's the repercussions if you fail? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Turn the water off! There you go. <laughs> I did it! Alright. There's another use for work gloves, right? Yeah. Bye. Bye. There you go. Rinse the car off. Rinse the car off. Open it out there, right? Look at me. Why do I close it out there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There you go. You need to get a big sprayer. That's how you you wash your car now. All right. You guys are washing blueberry. Like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.